Hello aspiring familiarologists, I'm Heather at Amalgamingle and I'm a huge Nino Cooney nerd. And being a Nino Cooney nerd, I've studied the wizard's companion and absorbed everything that Telling Stone has to offer. But one of the most confusing elements of Wrath of the White Witch is the classification of familiars. With 14 different genus groups and hundreds of familiars, it is fair to say that level 5 wanted an intricate system. <laughs> To further complicate matters, each familiar falls under one of four different astral signs. There are sun, moon, star and planet types featured in Nino Kuni, and which sign a familiar belongs to can signify its strengths and weaknesses against other signs. The game does a lot of things very well, but explaining the relationship between and significance of each sign is not one of them. So today I want to go through all the astral signs. Before I get started, there are a few things you should know about astral signs, sometimes called celestial signs. Firstly, signs are completely unrelated to a familiar's genus classification. Secondly, you can get single sign familiars and double sign familiars each of which has their disadvantages and advantages, and all four signs have a double version called twin signs, which increases the magnitude of its effects. Thirdly, a familiar sign is indicative of what drops and jumble drops are needed to metamorphose that familiar. For example, a sun sign familiar will need to be fed a sun drop to metamorphose into its second form. And finally, each sign is strong and weak against another sign. Sun is strong against moon, star is strong against sun, Moon is strong against star and planet reigns supreme. The significance of this is that if your familiar falls under a sign that is strong against your opponent's sign, then your familiar will deal 20% additional damage during that encounter. Similarly, if your familiar falls under a sign that is weak against their opponent's sign, then they will deal 20% less damage. For example, a sun familiar will deal 20% extra damage against a moon sign familiar, but will receive 20% more damage against a star sign familiar. Twin sign familiars have 10% added to those figures, equaling 30%. Signs come with two different kinds of 5% resistances to certain attacks attached to them, with twin sign familiars having that figure doubled at 10%. To be very honest with you, this system isn't implemented very well in the game and there are some familiars that can break the game with how powerful they can be. You can easily get through Nino Kuni paying absolutely no attention to familiar signs at all. I certainly didn't in my first playthrough. However, signs do make a minor difference in the early game during a tough battle. So now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's start by talking about the sun sign. I will mention some familiars that fall under each sign, but I will only talk about their first forms. I won't go into post metamorphosis, second or final forms. Alright, so sun sign familiars have a 5% resistance to sleep and fire attacks. Sun signs are strong against moon signs, dealing an additional 20% damage and weak against star sign familiars, therefore receiving 20% extra damage when pitted against them. A lot of first form familiars from different genus groups fall under the sun sign, but a lot of them come from the Bestiae, Dracone and Minima familiars. Infant, Clubber Cub, Ruff and Rhinosaur are Beast Eye familiars with a sun astral sign. Rabot, Tyke, Turbandit, Spitu and Floret are sun signs from the Minima group, with Floret being the only twin sun Minima familiar. Naja, Teeny Bopper, Sap Dragon and Draggle are all Dracones with a sun sign and Naja is the only one with a twin sun astral sign. Note that the Draggle can only be gained through cashing in the familiar ticket found in your bottomless bag at the Temple of Trials and golden versions appear post game at Old Smokey. Aside from Naja and Floret, there are five other twin sun familiars. Splisher, Sprog Cog, Lagoon Nyad, Sunshine and Girl Fiend are all twin sun familiars from the Aquatica, Automata, Nymphi, Arcana and Martui genus classes. The remaining single sun astral sign familiars consist of Danglerfish, Monolith, Mites, Wombat, Worker Bumble, Sillimander and Boggly Boo. Moon astral sign familiars have 5% resistances to confusion and water type attacks. Being strong against star familiar types means that they inflict 20% additional damage but are weak against sun signs and therefore receive increased damage. Ice Maiden is the only familiar with a twin moon astral sign and the rest are single moon sign types. From the Milich genus there's Purloiner and Hoggoblin. 
Tadlywink and Hooray are moon signs from the Aquatica genus. Idler and Dinky are the only moon signs from the Minima genus. And Boogie and Bonehead join the moon sign family from the Martui genus class. Of course, there are other moon familiars, but those are the first form familiars that have a moon astral sign. The Bestiae, Aves, Arcana and Daemonia familiars account for the bulk of this astral sign. Bartender, Saw, Boar and Sasquish are the Bestiae familiars with a moon astral sign and Minor Bird, Drongo and Two Wit join the moon group from the Aves genus family. Pom Pom, Hullabaloon and Aurora Lynx are Arcana genus familiars and Lightshade and Shrimpaler are from the Daemonia genus family. Fuddy Daddy, Napcap, Incy, Potty and Plessy are the only first form moon sign representatives across each remaining genus groups. Star sign familiars are 5% resistant to poison and storm type attacks. Star signs are weak against moon signs, but are strong against sun astral signs, meaning they will inflict more damage onto sun familiars and gain more damage from moon familiars. The star astral sign is primarily made up of Aves, Flora, Nymphae, Arcana and Mortui familiar genus types. Crowhawk, Sleepy Fowl and Fighting Gale represent the Aves family. Lumberwood, Bubbud and Green Buncher come from the Flora genus and Airhead, Seed Sprite and Toko bless us with their presence from the Nymphae genus class. No slacking you! Star sign familiars that fall under the Arcana genus class include Kipper, Shonky Honker, and Relics, with Wisp, Zombo, and Egg Roll accounting for the Martui genus group. The remaining star sign familiars span across the Aquatica, Minima, Vermes, and Dracones genera in the form of Sparky, Small Fry, Flutterby, via a familiar ticket, and the Mighty Dinoceros, my favourite first form battlefield tank familiar. Tin Man and Airhead are the only twin star sign familiars in the base game. However, the AV's genus familiar Griffey, one of my absolute favourites, is also a twin star familiar gained initially through DLC content, but can now be cashed in at the Temple of Trials using a familiar ticket in the remastered version of the game. Planet sign familiars are very rare, but offer fantastic benefits. Having a planet sign familiar will increase experience gains by 5%. It will receive no increased damage from all other signs and inflict 10% additional damage across the board. Being strong against all other signs means that planet types are much rarer and the only attainable planet familiar in the game belongs to the Nobilia genus classification. These consist of Mandragora, its second form Pandoragora, its third form, Tundragora, and its final form, Mendragora, are all planet sign familiars, and they cannot be found in the wild. Described as proud creatures spoken of in myth and legend in the Wizard's Companion, the only way to get the Mandragora is by beating S rank in the Solosium series. This is not an easy thing to achieve, and I have previously uploaded a video guide on gaining S rank in the Solosium series, which I will link to the video for those interested. Like the Toko line, Nobilia familiars require a lot of XP to level up. However, it can be worth it since planet types are strong against all other signs and can become a fantastic tank and healer to have in your party. So that's all four astral signs explained. This video is shorter than most videos we upload and I hope you found it informative and helpful. I have a lot of Nino Kuni content planned for the near future and other games of a similar vein. So if you love the game as much as I do, then now is an excellent time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Anyways, thank you so much to all our viewers for your continued support. I've been Heather at Amalgam Mingle and thanks for watching.